What's up everybody? I hope you're having a good day. This is Matt Brown and today we are going to be taking a look at something on the remote for my smart TV. So I don't know if you're like me but I will sometimes fidget with the remote control when I'm watching TV and when I was doing that with my remote I found that there are a number of pads that are exposed uh, just by taking off the battery cover to the remote control for my TV. So we're gonna go over and take a look at this on the desk uh, with the help of uh, a new tool and then we're gonna actually look at the signal under the logic analyzer. So let's go first over to the microscope and I will show uh, what we see here. Okay, so taking off the battery cover and taking a look here and if I can kind of tilt this and then try to get it in focus uh, you can see that there uh, clearly are these test points that are available uh, just kind of so just to kind of scan through here uh, right where the battery is you can clearly see through and at the right angle if I get it into focus you can see that uh, the test points are labeled ground, log, RX, TX, and VBAT. So I was poking around with this and actually found some interesting signals on uh, specifically that log pad right there. So first to show you how I'm going to probe on this signal, because you might have noticed that there is no solder currently on any of these test points. And so how am I going to connect up to that? So let's look at the desk cam to take a look at that. So I recently got a new tool that I've been looking forward to getting for a while. It is this uh, PC Byte probe kit. And so the main uh, piece of the kit, so it comes with this uh, you know, magnetic base and then all of uh, these units and then these PCB holders that's holding up my DEF CON badge over here just to show off uh, these things. Um, They're magnetic, they stick to this uh, piece, of, piece of metal, this flat piece of metal, and then the thing that's really awesome about these that make them tick, uh, we'll see a little bit better under the microscope, is that they have these pogo pins connected to a needle and it is so sharp that I kind of like I don't want to like poke my finger with it but you can see they are spring there's a spring loaded needle inside of there so that when you gently rest that needle on uh, a point on a board that you want to probe it gives a little bit and it will stay in place and this is weighted such that you'll see it doesn't it doesn't stay up it's weighted on purpose so that it, this head is is too heavy for uh, this, you know, somewhat elastic, somewhat uh, whatever you want to call it, material. Uh, it, it, it's supposed to drop and maintain pressure on whatever point on the PCB. So I've got a couple of these over here. And then, yeah, the other cool part about it is that they have, you know, two points on, on each of these probes for you to plug in uh, some type of a, uh, you know, a wire to it. And so I've got two of these rigged up over here and they're connected to my logic analyzer, one to ground and one to uh, channel zero on my, on my logic analyzer. So now we're going to go over under the microscope and we are going to connect up to the ground and the log test points. Let's bring the microscope over and switch to its view. Now, these probes, you do have to kind of finagle them to get them in place underneath a microscope. They do a lot better job uh, if they're not underneath a microscope, but it doesn't mean that it's not possible to do that. So, I've got the first one connected there to ground. And then I'm going to try to show you the best angle that I can of this other one. I'm actually going to get the ground a little bit out of the way. 
so that you can see. And now I'm connected to the log, and you can see how, see that spring action there that gives and just sits there. And I'm really impressed that it's even doing this under the microscope, again, because of the non-ideal angle that these, uh, that the probe heads are sitting at. So now that I have that in place, we can head over to our logic analyzer here on the screen, and we can try to observe uh, what's going on here. So I've got my uh, Sealy Logic 2 pulled up here. So my really cheap knockoff logic analyzer works with the Sealy software. So we are uh, sampling at uh, 8 million samples per second. That should be just fine for uh, what we're doing today. And then I'm going to just hit start and zoom out. And then what I'm going to do is go over to the desk and I'm going to hit the power button on the remote. And so I'm going to have to be careful to not uh, disturb the probes. And I'm going to try to just hit it once and then come off. So I just tap that button once and that initiates that data this digital data on that log pin of the remote control that we saw. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. And we're going to specifically go and look at this first signal right here that gets sent. So I have gotten a lot of feedback from my previous logic analyzer videos that there's a more intelligent way to figure out what the baud rate is. And so I took some of that feedback and this program does actually uh, have the ability to uh, give me some of that information. So if I hover over uh, this, si this part of the signal, you'll see it's taking a measurement at two points. And then up in the upper left, it's, it's giving me a width. It says the width of this signal is one megahertz or Translated into a baud rate, that would be one million, uh, one yeah, one million, uh, you know, samples per second, right? So, what I can do is then for to to attempt to interpret this data, we can go in here into the analyzer, we can choose async serial, and then uh, so. We're going to use all the defaults here, except for this. We're going to set this to 1 million for 1 megahertz. And then the data decodes perfectly. And so the cool part about this is that, yeah, then it shows us all the data uh, here that's getting transferred in, in its hexadecimal representation. Uh, we can, you can click over here to try to see it, and like it'll try to interpret it as ASCII, and and it's definitely uh, this is not ASCII. This is just clearly some binary protocol. So, but what we can do is this first message here, right? Because there's a lot of other messages that get sent, but if I were wanting to start to reverse engineer this binary protocol. I could start to take this hex data here, and that's what I did. Uh, so this first message, if I want to understand this first message here that starts at 2F and it ends at 28F8. So if I want to like go up here and copy down to 28F8. So I can copy that. And then I can come over to a text file here, uh, and you can see I've gotten a a couple of these already pulled up into this text file, but I could I could paste this and then I could, you know, I could come through here and just, you know, just cut out the hex data. And then of course I have to take out the weird special character that's also there and uh, the other stuff. So I'm not gonna do that again, but I have two of them up above right here. Uh, two messages based on the same action on the remote control, me, pressing that power button just momentarily and then letting up on the power button. So this is how I start out 
whenever I have a binary protocol that I'm looking at, whether it's something that I find, you know, physically on uh, on a circuit board, or I find it going over the network, over over Wi-Fi, over Bluetooth. If I want to start to uh, figure out what the different uh, byte positions mean, what the different byte values mean, this is where I start. Just getting them into a text file where then I separate them. I get a number of the similar kind of message like I've done here. I've got two of, of this kind of message. And then I separate it into what is the same and what's different. So here I've got, you know, so all, every time I've done this, and, I, and I've done it a few other times to confirm that these patterns are accurate so far, uh, that it always starts with 2F, that that seems to be the start byte or maybe it's a message type byte uh, for this message. Uh, we could actually validate that. We pop back over here and we try to look at what one of these other signals. Uh, okay, this doesn't start with 2F, so who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe that, okay, so here this, this other message starts with 2F. So that seems to be some sort of significant start byte to say, hey, I'm, I'm starting to transmit a message. Um, and then again, I see this part has differed every time. This is the same, this is different, the same, different, the same. Um, but uh, even, even when these are different, you can see a pattern like here in the first message, well, 7D matches up with 7D, and here in the second message, A8 matches up with A8. So it's this pattern, it's this process of pattern recognition. And then if I wanted to really dig into this more, then I would try to either start reverse engineering the, this, the application on the smart TV itself that takes in this data and processes it in some way, or I could look at the remote and try to extract, you know, some kind of microcontroller firmware to understand how that data is being used. But uh, regardless, this is, uh, this is how I start. I, I pull data uh, from some source, get it into a text file and start to analyze it, start to attempt some sort of decoding process. And then once I have a better idea of how to decode it, then maybe I write up a Python program that helps me automatically decode certain parts of messages. Uh, but this is how it all starts. So I just wanted to show you uh, today uh, my smart TVs, remote controller, and uh, the new PC Byte probes. I love those. I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of those. I was able to pull all this data without soldering to anything. That is huge because then I don't risk damaging my uh, TV's remote control. Uh, among other things. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what other devices you would like me to look at and have a great day.